to see all of you. It's only by the grace of God that we are able to come together. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. According to WHO, okay, WHO, World Health Organization, it is estimated that every year, one million people die from suicide. Okay? That is one death every 40 seconds. And now it is estimated that by 2020, it's going to be one death every 20 seconds. And according to World Health Organization, once again, suicide rate have increased in the past 40 years, over 40 plus years. So what caused uh, suicide? You know, many times because it's mental health, or it's because of depression, depressions, or s sexual abuse, drug abuse. <coughs> and often we find many people commit suicide because of emptiness. Okay. They feel as if lives have no meaning. There's no hope in life. You know, there's nothing I can do. It's better for me to die, you know. Let's open your Bible to Second King. Let's pray before, <laughs> before we start. <coughs> Gracious Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity, Lord, to search your word. I pray as I speak, may the word of my mouth, uh, mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, acceptable in thy sight. And bless those listening to Lord, open their ears. And may it be a blessing to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Open your Bible to 2 King, <coughs> chapter 4, 2 King 4, verse 1 to 7. If you dare say amen. Wow, you guys are quick. That's good. Now there cried a certain, okay, we're going to read 1 to 7, okay. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of a prophet unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that, that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the Creator is come to take unto him my two sons to be bond, bond men. Yeah, another word for slavery. Slave. <coughs> and Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me what, thy, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy hand may have not anything in the house save a, save a pot of oil. Verse 3. Then he said, Go borrow the vessel, borrow of all thy neighbor, even empty vessel, borrow not a few. Verse 4. And when the, thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and that, and shalt pour out into all thy vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Verse 5, so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessel to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass when the vessel were full that she said unto her son, Bring yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Verse 7, then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil. And pay thy debt and leave thy and thy children of the rest. See here, here, so we see a woman. She live a happy life with her husband. Her husband served the Lord, you know. It's like if you think of nowadays, her husband studied theology to be a pastor, you know. But back in the day, he was studying under Elijah to be a prophet, you know, to be a man of God. But on a Sunday, her husband died. Not just that, 
he left a debt with him, and he left two sons with <coughs> with her, with her uh, his wife. And other woman's like, oh no, Lord, what do I do? You know, <clears throat> life is tough. But the woman go to Elijah and say, hey, you know that my husband love you and he serve you. He served uh, with, with you, and now he's dead. So I need help, you know. And Elijah said, what do you have? How can I help you? She said, I have nothing but just a little bit of oil in the pot. And Elijah said, yeah, OK. Go to your neighbors and borrow more vessel, empty one, and bring it home, shut the door, and stop filling. And that's what she did borrow many vessels as she can and come home and shut the door and start failing and failing, 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 failing until she ran out of the pot. And that's when the oil stopped. And she was able to sell <coughs> the oil and make some money and pay for uh, the debt and bring, uh, use the rest for the, the uh, Use the rest of money, I guess. So, you know, this woman was empty. Okay? She was spiritually empty. Here she have a husband who loved God so much. She's probably loved God so much too. But now on, all of a sudden, her husband died because he served God. You know, death. That thought might come across her mind too, you know. Lord, what's going on? My husband loved you. Why did he die, you know? She was more emotionally, uh, spiritually empty. And not only that, she was also physically empty. When her husband died, she had nothing left but a pot of oil, that's it. How can you do with that? There's not even weed or flour to make some food with that. <laughs> and she's also, she's also emotional, emotionally empty, okay? She only have two sons left, and now the creditors are going to come and take the two sons. What is going on, Lord? You know, she's empty. She's empty. But friend, sometimes this is the same thing with our life, okay? How many of you have, here have felt empty at, at one point? Yeah, we all, we all have, right? You know, it might be that we lost someone or we got separated from someone that we love. It might be that we, our cat died, our dogs die. okay? Even simple, the little things like that, okay? It might be that, <coughs> it might be that we don't, we don't like the way we look, you know? That's, that's a real thing. Because I have seen in YouTube, I mean, uh, a documentary. <laughs> a documentary on YouTube, okay? There's this man and woman that wanted to look like Barbie. Yeah, you guys have seen that? They spent thousands and thousands of money just to look like Barbie. What is going on, you know? Anyway, we feel empty because... We don't get the things that we want to get. We want it so bad, but we can't have it, or we can't get it. We feel empty, and maybe it's because things doesn't work out the way we want it to work out, you know. So, friends, <coughs> this woman, when she was empty, she did not commit suicide, okay? Or she did not say, man, life is over. Oh, she quit. But she instead turned to the man of God, knowing and believing that God can help her. Amen. Amen. Friend, we should do the same thing when, whenever we are empty. Okay? Many times peop when people don't know what to do or when they, uh, when they are at the end of the road, they say, oh, man, God can't, don't, God doesn't care. Many times, 
we see people become atheists because of that. Say, you know what? God doesn't care. Friend, if you believe that, that's a lie. That's a devil lie. Open your Bible to 1 Peter 5, verse 7. It's a short verse, and it's a very good reminder. <coughs> First Peter, First Peter five. If you if you dare say amen. Okay, uh, wow. Well. First Peter five. What does it say? Someone read it for us. Can't see all your what? Care upon him for he care for you. God do care. Amen. And sometimes people say, well, God doesn't know my feeling. Okay. Instead, we, we, whenever we feel empty, we quickly run to our friends. And we spread all our feeling to them, saying, hey, this and that, that. <coughs> That's a good thing, but I think the first thing we should do is run to God and share our feelings. Because the Bible says He knows all our feelings. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, 15 says, For we have not a high priest. Who's our high priest? Amen. Which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. What does infirmities mean? Weakness. Yeah, I have to search that out. But was in all point tempted like as we are, yet without sin. At one point, Jesus have experienced all the feelings and emotion, emotionally in this earth as the way we felt. So friend, he know. God know. Jesus know. <coughs> and God wants to fill you with joy and peace. Okay, Romans 15, 13, it said, Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy, all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And Jesus also promised, Come, ye heavy laden. How does it go? And I will give you rest, right? So, friend, again, the woman turned to God when she's empty. And we know by the end of the story, she was failed. Not even failed, she had so much that she was able to even use the rest. Amen? See, friend, when God fails us, he overfails us. <coughs> but if you look at verse, uh, Second King verse, 2 and 3, chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. For the, for the woman to be filled, okay, she needs to be empty first. Elijah told, Elijah told her to go find an empty vessel. Why? So that she can be filled, right? So that God can pour and God can fill. <coughs> verse 3 says, uh, verse 2 and 3. And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, That Haman hath not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow the vessels, a bore of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. See, friend, if you want God to fill us, we need to be empty, okay? And I want to make three points. We need to be empty of sin, okay? Because Bible told us in Isaiah 59, verse 2, open your Bible there with me. Isaiah, Isaiah 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated, have separated between you and your God, and your sin have his, hide his face from you, that 
he will not hear. What's another word for iniquities? <coughs> Friend, it is if we keep hold on sins and it is impossible for God to fail us. We need to let go. We need to empty of our sins so that God can fail us. Amen. And another thing is that, friend, we need to empty ourselves. If we try to fail ourselves, it ain't going to last long. It's going to be temporary. So we need to be empty of self so that God can fail us. Many times <coughs> many times we try to fill our emptiness by substituting with either drugs, video games, social media, dating for fun, pornography, movies, and all that. But friend, that, those things only last for a bit. See, uh, open uh, Psalms 34, verse 8. What does it say? Psalm 34, verse 8. It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Amen. Blessed is the man that is trusting self. Is that, is that what it says? It says Blessed is the man that trusts in God. <coughs> oh, uh, if we continue on in the story of uh, 2 Kings, verse chapter 4, 38 and 41. Here we see the story that Elijah, after you know the woman, Elijah now went to a, a different place. He, it said that he come again to Gago. Uh, that is Second King, verse four thirty-eight, thirty-eight, verse thirty-eight and forty-one. So when he went there, there was a famine. Okay, there was famine, and there's a group of prophets there. Studying theology as well, I guess. <coughs> and they was hungry. They were hungry because there's no food there. And Elijah told one of his servants, hey, go make some soup. These people are hungry, you know. So one of his servants went out and he saw a, a vine in the floor and picked some fruits, wild fruits that is on the vine and brought in him, bring it back with him. He said that he put in his garment, like a lot. Chop it off and put it in a pot, cook it, feed it to the people. And the people say, oh my, this day tastes like death, man. It's poisonous. We don't want this, you know. And Elijah, Elijah said, bring me the soup. Bring me a, a flour. So Elijah poured flowers into soup and, man, the soup tastes delicious. Everything changed all of a sudden. You see, friend, the story, this, it's the same thing with our life, you know. When we were empty, when we were, when we were empty, we're trying to substitute God with something that we think is good, you know. But God failing is more, much more delicious, I mean. You see, If we let God fill our part, it would taste much better. First John sixteen thirty three said, This thing I have spoke unto you, that in me you might have peace. Amen. Is it is it in a video game that you might have peace? Is it in a pornography that you might have peace? Is there in movies, dating for fun, that you might have peace? It is in me that you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. Friends, be filled with Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if you read, <coughs> if you read, uh, Chapter uh, verse six. So the woman keep failing, you know. And it come to pass when the vessel the vessel were full that she she said 
unto her, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel. And right that moment, the oil stopped. Friend, this shows us that according to our belief, okay, our faith, our faith determines how much blessing we want. You see, this woman borrowed many. She could have borrowed just one, you know, and all she would get is one, one cup of oil. She could have borrowed only two cups. Uh, I mean, a vessel, a bowl, and she could have only be blessed with two. It's a good thing she borrowed many, and she even have blessed a level of amen. You see, friend, if your faith is one vessel, God will fill you with one vessel. So give all your faith, believe all, all in, so that God can Fill you all in as well, amen? amen. <coughs> Friend, our God is a God of uh, failing, okay? He's a master of failing our emptiness. He speci- specializes in filling our emptiness. In the beginning, he made the universe out of emptiness. He filled the universe out of the emptiness, okay? He filled... An empty earth with trees, with grass, with rocks, with fish, animals. He filled it up. Our God is a God of filling. Okay. And he also filled an empty pot with wines at the wedding. Okay. And if we continue reading on, right after, right after, um, right after the poisoning part, we see that Elijah was able to fill 100 empty stomach with 20 loaves. Friends, God filled. <coughs> 100 empty stomach with just 20 loaves. Also, we see in the New Testament, Jesus did the same thing. He filled 5,000 plus empty stomach with only five loaves of bread and two fishes in John 6, 1, 14. Friend, if Jesus can do this, if God can do this, your emptiness, whatever it is you have, it is nothing for him, amen? He can fail it too. I want to, I want to end with a, a quote from Desire of Ages. It said, from chapter 73, it said, The sinner unites his weakness to Christ's strength. His emptiness to Christ's fullness. Amen. His frailty to Christ's endurance might. His emptiness to Christ's fullness, friend. Do you believe that God can fill your emptiness? Do you want Jesus to fill your emptiness? Amen. In that case, stand up with me and let's sing, Fill My Cup, Lord. 493. Can uh, the, one of the pianists play for us, please? Thank you. 493. Like the woman in the well I was seeking
Gracious Lord, thank you so much for your love and mercy, Lord. Thank you for knowing to fill my cup, our cup, Lord. Lord, I pray that as whenever we are empty, Lord, I pray that may each one of us be running to you to be filled, Lord, and help us to be empty of self, sins, and whatever substitution that we try to fill ourselves with, Lord, so that we can be filled with your love, your joy, your peace, and your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.